All right, welcome back from the break. You're watching Morning Rush, and we're getting into our conversation this morning on the show. We're talking about fiber. We mentioned earlier before the break that it is a very important thing that needs to be talked about. And so this morning we've got uh, a, a guest joining us who, who is an ambassador for Fibroid Awareness and Fanny Palmer has joined us this morning and she's going to be sharing with us her experience with it and you know how she defeated it and you know how you if you're watching us this morning can also take some inspiration um, from that. So let's get into it. Fanny, good morning and welcome. Thank you. Good morning this mom and good morning viewers. Yes, uh, good, to, good to have you here. So Fibroid, I mean... First off, share with us your, your experience so that people who are watching will know that, okay, you're not just you have to just talk about, talk about yeah. it, but there's an experience to it. Uh, first of all, I want to thank um, Metro TV for inviting me and yeah. having this discussion because um, it's a long time that we break the silence about fibroid. Mm. I'm a fibroid survivor. Um, I was about in my mid-20s, almost I've suffered from fibroid for over 15 years of my life. And I've gone through four surgeries, cutting surgeries, and non-cutting one. That then, the last one also there was a mistake. So all in all, I've done like seven surgery, and it's by the grace of God that I am alive. And because of that, I realized that many, many women out there are also suffering from fibroids. So I'm using my story to break the silence about fibroid, and also ever is suffering from fibroid, so that you know that you are not alone. There are other women out there who are suffering from fibroid, and wow. you can defeat it. Seven? Seven. Yes, seven surgeries. That's L uh, scary. I mean, I just want yeah. to ask from the beginning, when you were going to have the first one, were you told that, oh, this was going to solve the issue? No. What actually happened, it all started, I was pregnant, but I didn't know, and I went to my gynae, and then to the examination, and he got to say, oh, I'm feeling like some mass or so that's how like he described it mm. and then he said okay we're going to do the pregnancy test and also let's do a scan okay so um the results came out and he said um well congratulations you're going to be a mother but i have some worrisome news for you um it's as if like the mass is according to the scan you've developed some tiny fibroids but let's wait and see how it goes and then after some time i have to go home watch and see that's the first um the doctor will say, especially if it is not yet big. Mm. And I went home, and after some time, I had a miscarriage. So the, the fibroid have put pressure on the, the pregnancy, mm. and I lost it. And I also wanted to, to have another baby. So well, there is no way the fibroid has regrown again because I was having, um, according to the doctor, like I was having some immune imbalance. So that was mm -hmm. what was causing the regrow mm -hmm. of the fibroid. Okay. So there is possibility you can remove the fibroid mm -hmm. and it can regrow again. And that was what was happening to me. And by then, I didn't know how to manage it. Mm -hmm. So throughout my life, these past years, mm -hmm. I've been able to like know how to manage it after all what I've gone through mm -hmm. and be able to see that, no, I need to speak out because um, many women out there are suffering from fibroid. That's how I came to the point of writing the book, Defeat Fibroid and Be Free, which is the call for action because... You can have fibroid and you might not know mm -hmm. that you are having it. Okay. Yes. But at what age did you realize that you had fibroid? I was around 26. 26. And that's yeah. very scary because per statistics, yeah. most women between 20% to 80% develop fibroid. And the ages we know, that's not now. In recent times, things have changed. Yeah. We know that between the ages of 40 to 50, that's when most people develop fibroid. But you saw yours at the age of 26. Yes, it may shock you to even know that um, girls are developing fibroids now. And when I came out, when I started this campaign, mm -hmm. um, some ladies who are like, um, girls like 18, their parents will tell me, oh, this is what happened to my daughter. Mm -hmm. So it's not, what the, the issue is that once you're in your reproductive age, mm -hmm. there is possibility you can develop fibroid. Mm -hmm. But according to like we said, most times it's around like when you are 30 and above. Yeah. But yeah. these days, because of the, 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 maybe the kind of food that we the are food eating, we eat, the lifestyle. Uh, our lifestyle is yeah. also affecting. So people can be, girls can be like 18 mm -hmm. and develop fibroid. So once you're in your reproductive age, there's mm -hmm. possibility you can develop fibroid. Mm -hmm. Once you have a womb, because fibroid is a disease of the womb. Yeah. And it's a growth that takes place mm. in and around the uterus. Okay. So... Any woman with a womb mm -hmm. is a candidate to have a to fibroid. To have fibroid. That's, that's but the age 
gap is just open now. Yeah, it could happen to, to anyone. anyone. The moment you start menstruation. Menstruation. And, and um, some of the, the, the risk factors. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you start early menstruation, there's possibility that you can have fibro, you can develop fibro. Mm -hmm. So the risk factor like uh, heredity, if mm -hmm. it's in the family bloodline, it's in the bloodline, mm -hmm. your mother have it, there's possibility you can have it. That's why I'm raising my voice. So if you're a mother out there, you are suffering from fibro because there's a whole lot of secrecy among it with yeah. fibro because yeah. it relates to our menstrual period, yeah. our taboo, religious taboo. You don't talk about uh, your messes. People see mes menstruation as bad, mm -hmm. not knowing that it's, it's a natural process mm -hmm. that we all must go through. Mm -hmm. And women who don't have their messes, they are worried. They have to go to the hospital. So they there's a secrecy around this fibroid mm -hmm. because it's connected to our menstrual period. That is why I'm breaking the silence. So if you're a mother out there, you are suffering, you've been suffering from fibroid because most women who have been suffering from fibroid have gone through hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. At an early age, they have removed their womb because mm -hmm. the bleeding keep on coming. coming yeah. So I'm encouraging women to talk to their daughters about it. Oh, my daughter, I have suffered from this thing. Mm -hmm. So likely go for checkup at least when you are around your 20s start okay. looking at what yeah. is happening mm. out there mm. so heredity if it's in the family there's you possibility it, you can yeah. have it mm -hmm. and obesity if you are fat and you are not doing anything <laughs> yes it's, there's possibility you can develop fibroid yeah. and also lack of vitamin d mm -hmm. you can develop fibroid okay but there is no specific research have not proved, proved the exact cause of fibroid. of fibroid. Yeah. So these are just weeks and um, mm -hmm. factors mm -hmm. that are just been speculated. Mm -hmm. And early menstruation, mm -hmm. yeah, there's possibility you can have yeah. fibroid. But and black descendants, women who are black, mm -hmm. there's possibility <laughs> to get, to get, get fibroid. fibroid. The rate yeah. is high. Mm -hmm. yeah. Among black women, is 80% of mm -hmm. black women, by the time we are 50, mm -hmm. can develop fibroid. Yeah. What are some of the signs and symptoms you experienced when, um, is it when the doctor um, told you that you, there's a baby and there's also fibroid? What are some of the symptoms? At first, the, I, I didn't have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. It was just normal, mm -hmm. and um, then this news came out. Mm -hmm. And after some time, it began to progress, and then I began to see some worse sign. Number one signs that I experienced, not at the beginning, mm -hmm. because we have two categories of fibroid. There are different types of fibroid. Mm -hmm. They are classified and named according to how they are positioned in the womb. Okay. That's how their name is. Mm -hmm. But we have two main categories. Okay. Where we have the asymptomatic, mm -hmm. that you can have it and you don't have any mm -hmm. signs sign you are going, yeah. and then mm -hmm. one day the sign just Pops starts up, yeah. popping up. And then you have the symptomatic fibroid. Mm -hmm. When it's going to be symptomatic, it's going to be very, very troublesome sometimes. Mm -hmm. So the symptoms that I experienced as I was going, number one, heavy bleeding. Mm -hmm. I'll bleed because our normal menstruation should be like three days. The higher seven mm -hmm. days, it should be done. Yeah, five, between five, seven yeah, days. Yeah, seven, it should be done. Yeah. But it can go for like one week. Two weeks, three weeks, one month, one year. I bled for a whole year. So sometimes I become anemic. I remember there was one time I was driving. I, I just drove off the road because I became dizzy. Dizzy. I was insane. So, um, um, heavy bleeding, heavy, heavy bleeding, heavy bleeding mm -hmm. pain, mm -hmm. constipation. Sometimes I find it difficult to, to, to use it. Yes. Yeah. So these are all some of the signs that I experienced. Yeah. And it was not an easy place. It's not an easy place if you're having symptomatic mm -hmm. fibroid. So I encourage every woman out there, once you're in your reproductive age, always go for screening mm -hmm. so that you know what is happening. Mm -hmm. Even if you have finished having your babies, because most times you say, oh, because it's associated mm. with fertility, yeah. oh, you relax. Some women started developing fibroid after they have given birth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Before, before that, so mm. before you come, you said it depends on where the positioning of the fibroid is. Yes. Where, where was your position? Well, it was tiny. Okay. Half, 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 mm -hmm. half, all over. Okay. It wasn't the, the bigger one? No, it okay. wasn't the bigger one. Okay. And we have different sizes of fibroid. Mm -hmm. It can start from a, a lemon seed mm -hmm. to a watermelon seed. Okay. A lemon seed? Yes, a lemon seed. And a watermelon seed? Yes, that, as that big as even my head. It can be like... Uh -huh. yeah, it can then it grow. takes over the womb. It takes over the womb. Mm -hmm. That is where it will come, like they would advise you like to remove. Because another sign that some women will suffer um, abdominal distension. You mm -hmm. see their stomach being high as if they are pregnant. Yeah. So that's, it, it depends where the fibroid is mm -hmm. located. Okay. okay. So okay. your stomach can be flat, but mm -hmm. you can still have fibroid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Really, really inside the conversation we're having here, but... Um, from the perspective of a, of, of a man, um, through your, your, your journey, you know, do you find men understanding the situation, the problem, and are they you know, being supportive of their, their partners 
in this particular situation? Well, that is another issue because um, the awareness level is low regarding fiber. As I said, there is a whole okay. lot of secrecy because the Bible says lack of knowledge, my people perish. Because mm -hmm. men, most men don't understand what the women are going through. They yeah. cannot support. That is why I'm breaking the silence and I'm, I'm advocating, raising my voice so that men will understand that if your woman is going through this, mm. you must support her because having fibroid is already symptomatic because when you go to the hospital, it's already traumatic. When the doctor breaks that news to you, number one, mm. you're going to think, what will my partner say? How will he take it? Especially True. when it is linked with um, fertility, how will he take it? Because most men, that when I started this campaign in July, because July was declared as a fiber yeah. awareness month. Yeah, awareness month. Yes. So when I started sharing my story, most men were like explaining to me how they stood by their wives when they had a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. They never knew what the problem was. So, so many men who have got the idea, who are, who are aware about it, mm. are supporting their women. But some who do not know have to like neglect the women, especially like when they wake up in the morning and maybe see blood all over. You don't know how to like handle it. Because these are some of the signs and symptoms. Yeah. So men can do it. We need their support. We cannot do it alone. So if your wife or your fiancé is being diagnosed with fibroid, that is not a death sentence. That mm -hmm. does not mean she cannot give back. That does not mean she cannot live a life. She needs your help and your support. So, in, in, I mean, I, I, I am happy that at least some men are supporting that. But in your campaign, um, so, since you started, as you said, in July, what have you been doing? Share, share that with us also. Well, um, I've been raising awareness. I used to go to churches, talk about it, um, um, explain to women. And I remember I went to one church after the whole program. The one woman ran to me and just hugged me. I said, well, he said, this is the first time I'm hearing somebody like coming to the church talking about this thing like mm. this. He said, you cannot imagine because she couldn't even raise her head. She had gone through three surgeries and the, the third one was having a mistake. She's supposed to go to another one again. So she even called me. She cannot raise her back because there is a problem with her spine during the last surgery. So I'm going to churches. I plan to go to schools and um, using the media to advocate so that the awareness will be, raised, it will be raised. And also government should do something because the cost of fiber operation is not something small. I was going to ask about Yes, it's cost. about 6,000 cities at some government hospital mm -hmm. and 10,000 at some private, private hospital, hospital and more. And you might not know what to come in when you are asked to do mm -hmm. surgery. Maybe yeah. if you are lack of blood, because like I was bleeding, they were always asking me for blood transfusion all the time. So if you have to buy blood, you have... And there is no reliability that if you do the operation, it will not... It will not come... Re it will not re reoccur. Yeah. Mm. So that's why I'm raising my voice, especially for government agency, women's health organization, world health organization, and also appealing that the fibroid treatment be included in the NHIS yes. for women. Okay. Yeah. And menstrual pad, we also talk, we had the last time the debate about menstrual pad. Women who are suffering from fibroid, the pads that we use, hmm, it's not an easy thing. And now one pad is like about 15 to 20. 20 cities. Cities. If you have hmm. to use like one for one, three days sometimes. Because if you are bleeding, sometimes you don't even use the normal part. Yeah. I got to some point in my life, I was not even using the normal part. I was using pampers because I can't control myself. And another thing that I suffer, like sometimes, to even go out to talk to people, it affects my, mm. my, my interaction with yeah. people because I don't know when the bleeding will come in. Yeah. So these are the things that women go through. It affects their job. I've met women who have told me, one woman was um, doing some cooking, um, had some full stop joints because of the fibroid. She could not. And some people, because she could, she, most of the time they come, they see, they see stain mm. on her cloth and they think like, oh, what is this? How she's dirty and yeah. she was, she lost her job. Yeah, I get it. So the understanding of it generally yeah. has not been there. Uh, yes. Like that, as, as she said. So Fanny Palmer is a fibroid ambassador, um, you know, trying to create awareness about this whole disease. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. I just want to know, uh, I mean, from my, from your accent, you're, you're, you're Nigerian. I just want to know <laughs> if you've been Ghana like your whole life or what uh, did you get? I'm a uh, Sierra Leonean. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> From Sierra Leone. Okay. Really? okay. Yes. It, it, I'm it, a Sierra Leonean. Maybe I haven't heard. No, I know how Liberians speak. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 okay. Well, was, the accent sounds nice. That's, that's, what most, that's what most Ghanaians say. So I'm used to it now. As soon as I speak, I hear Nigeria, I say, no, I'm an African. 
Okay. 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 So you've been in Ghana for for, for uh, like six years now. Six years. Yes. Okay. yes. That's good. But, but then I before consider you go, myself as a Ghanaian. Oh, it's good. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's good. Of course. It's good. But before you go, let's talk about your book. Okay. Um, what does it entail? It talks about fibre. Okay. Defeat fibre and the free. It's mm -hmm. a call to action mm -hmm. okay. because when you are being diagnosed with fibroid, especially mm -hmm. symptomatic fibroid, you are wondering, uh, how can I be free? Mm -hmm. When will this journey last? Mm -hmm. How long will I go with it? And there are various ways okay. in defeating fibroid. Mm -hmm. You have the medical way, which is you have the hysterectomy, that is the, 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 the myometomy first, maybe. Fibroid is being treated according to your age and mm -hmm. the desire. Maybe if you go, you want a baby, they will say, okay, well, let's do his uh, myometomectomy. Okay. They remove and then they see what will happen. Mm -hmm. And then if that doesn't work, finally, maybe you go to hysterectomy. And then the, the doctor will say, okay, let's remove the womb mm -hmm. for you to be free. So that is another issue again that women oh. go through. Mm -hmm. Involuntarily, you have to accept for your womb to be removed. Mm -hmm. And some people who knows it and begin to stigmatize that woman. Yeah. So are these things stated in the book? If someone yes. reads it, yes, it will it's in the book. Them. So it's holistic approach. I'm okay. also talking about lifestyle because that's okay. how I was able to like to defeat it and be able to manage it and live like this. Okay. 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 So your lifestyle, what you eat, exercise, how you go about even stress. Mm -hmm. Because that's another factor hmm. that can affect, that can trigger a woman. You realize okay. that sometimes as a woman, if you stress throughout that month, your messes, maybe the color will change, something will happen to yeah. your body. So if you are always stressful, you are always busy mm -hmm. from one, okay, and that's one thing about us women. We are always taking care of everybody and not taking care Except of ourselves. Except ourselves. Uh -huh. yeah. So <laughs> self-care practices. Yeah. Know your limit. Don't just be going, going, going. Some people say, I don't have time. So I mentioned in the book, if you don't have time for your wellness, you have time for your sickness. <laughs> Yeah, it, that, it makes sense. That, that makes sense. It makes sense. That if you don't have sense. time for your wellness, you have time for your sickness. Painful time. Yes, that's, that's very Anyway, nice. it's, it's really very insightful with a, with a woman from Freetown. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, doing some great work when it comes to fibroid. And uh, wish you well with, with, your, with your campaign. And I'm sure lots of people are watching um, are inspired by your story Thank and you. also your book that you've written and I'm, I'm sure they can get you funny palmer on social media yes um on, on facebook you can get me and also funny fine on um, um facebook i have a group there okay. and also on, on youtube and also if a woman out there please go for screening. Mm -hmm. mm. Even if you can just take it, give yourself that birthday gift every year at least. Go for screening go for and screen. check what is happening. If you're a young woman out there, you've been diagnosed with fibro, that's not the end. If your partner, as a man, if your partner has been diagnosed with fibro, we need your support because that emotional support, that is one thing that I realize that is killing people when you are sick. Mm. If you don't have somebody to talk to you, I remember when I was at that sick bed, you know, sometimes I, I nearly gave up. I wanted, I mm -hmm. was tired with the pain. Mm -hmm. But you know, my family members were there, oh no, we need you, we need you. So I realized that that support, mm -hmm. support system mm -hmm. that is works. very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But so how many kids do you have? I have one. You have one, okay. Yeah. That's, that's but true. I have lots of yes. people. Yes, external, <laughs> external one. But, but, but the fact that you're able to go through and still have a child. My, very, my, very my campaign is, let fibroid treatment be included in NHIS. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a very good call. A very, very good call. And then when I see the CEO of NHIS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll put it to, to him. Uh, doc, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Cole, we, we, need, we need the fibroid treatment to be on the NHIS. Funny, thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you so much, Justin. Wish you the very well. So, uh, Funny Palmer is a fibroid awareness ambassador trying to. No bring the awareness to all of us so we can defend for the women out there so you can defeat um, fiber.